Hey guys, Scott Poley here. I am a session guitarist and pedal steel player. I also produce and write music. In this video, I've enlisted my favorite guitar repair man, Phil Orm from Doghouse Guitar Repairs, to show you how to intonate your guitar. Now, the same principles apply whether you play electric guitar, bass guitar, acoustic guitar as well. It's just a little more tricky on an acoustic, but the same principles are there. He's gonna show you on this brilliant little Harley Benton Stratocaster style guitar that I bought very, very cheaply, and there's a whole series of videos about this guitar. But without further ado, let's go and see Phil. Intonation, basically, if you play an open chord, like a D at the second, and then play the same D at the 14th, they should be in tune. And if, if they're not, then you need to adjust the intonation, which is the scale length. So I'm just gonna check this, and you don't do this. A lot of people who see the guys are checking it in the, in the vice or on the bench. You need to do this in the playing position because of the weight of the strings, the, the weight of the, the guitar, the neck, everything can make a difference to the intonation. So do it in the playing position. And all we're gonna do is make sure you're in tune. So we're gonna get it set to, so it's bang on E. And you'll remember the Peterson's accurate to one one thousandth of a semitone. So you're using a Peterson tuner, let's yeah. get a little bit of a shot of that. A now, Strobo Plus. You might get some some flickering on there and you think, oh, well, that's not exactly in, but this mm. is accurate to one one thousandth of a semitone. Yeah. So if this is pretty much there or thereabouts, it's it's closer than most. Yeah. You, know, you can hear, if you're playing an open note, the harmonic on the 12th and the fretted note should all be the same. Mm. If one's like, and you can hear it sharp, then you, you can use your ear. Obviously, yeah. you want to do it really accurately, then, you know, the, the more accurate the tuner. But even apps now for your phone, you can plug in. Now, if you can see, um, this is rolling forward when I play the fretted note. See? When I play it open, it's stationary, and then it's rolling forward. So the note's sharp. So if it's sharp, I need to move the saddle backwards to, to lengthen the string to make it flat, flatter. So if it's sharp, you go backwards. If it's flat, you go forwards. And I'm just gonna, now ideally, you know, you're supposed to really take this string tension down on this. And what I normally say is start with these further back than you need to, and then always be moving forwards. And that way you don't damage the string because if the forwards and I'm pulling back, you can actually snag the string and, yeah. and that can- But we're not it. too far up. We're not but miles No, we're not miles up there. So I'm just gonna do a, a couple of turns of the screwdriver and check it again. So open, it's gone sharp now, which means I've moved the thing back. Still sharp. So again, just so all you're doing is you're putting your screwdriver in the little screw just at the end at the back, here, yeah, and I'm pulling the saddle backwards because it's sharp. The distance between here and here is too short when it's sharp, so you need to lengthen it by taking the saddle back. Mm. I think yeah. that's one thing that people don't understand what intonation yeah. does. I think they understand that it can make your guitar in tune or not, but they don't understand that exactly what it's doing. It's one of my, and I know it's one of Scott's bugbears. Uh, it's like nails on a blackboard. Uh, on a blackboard, if somebody's slightly out of tune and they're playing, it drives me insane. But you know, some people are quite happy about it. So, just gonna a little tiny bit more, and then I think we're done on that. There you go. So I'm stationary now on the fretted. So that one's done. So we can see the tuner there. Yeah. I mean, you, you had a little flicker. Don't worry about it so much on the piece, and I say because it's so accurate. And then we're just going to repeat that for the whole guitar. Yeah. So you obviously don't need to see this. I'll just carry on doing this. But it's literally the same thing. If it's sharp, move the saddle back. If the note, the fretted note at the twelfth is flat, then you need to go forward yeah. to sharpen. And this is a really easy thing that you can do at home, and you can keep checking every couple of months or so on your guitar to make sure it's sorted. But don't do it on old strings. Literally, strings come out of the pack, onto the guitar, do the intonation. If they're a day old, you've been playing it, obviously the, the sweat from your fingers can tarnish the strings slightly. That'll affect the intonation. And this is why as well, if you see professional guitar players out on tour that change their strings after every three songs or Absolutely. after every, and yeah. that's, that's why, is they want that consistency and for the, other, the audience. And the way I always say to people with this is, once you've done the intonation with a brand new set of strings and you're playing, as soon as it starts sounding out of tune up the neck, it's an indication that you need to change the strings. Yeah. So the likes of like Scott and myself, if I'm playing, I change mine every other gig. Scott may change them every other couple of songs maybe, you know, but, but you, obviously you don't need to do that. And if you don't want to be spending a fortune on strings, 
just stick your set of strings on and when you start sounding out of tune up the neck, then change them. Phil, I've got a quick question for you while you're doing that. Okay. To maintain your strings, if you've got them on for a couple of weeks and say you know, you're not playing every day and they get a little bit of rust on them, how would you best maintain them? Well, there's a couple of things. I mean, first of all, you know, the, the, the key things to do is rule of thumb, I think, on a set of strings is I think they're good for about 30 or 40 hours of play. But it depends on how much you play and also how grubby you are and how much sweat you produce when you're playing. Wash your hands before you start to play. So you got you know your hands are clean when you start. And then the other thing is lint fleet, when you finish playing, then wipe the strings down. There's a couple of things you can use, or what I use at gigs. But this is a cracking little bit of kit. So when I finish playing, this again, I think this was Amazon, Amazon or eBay, and it basically comes apart. This thing just get a bit dirty you now. These can be cleaned. So you just stick it when you finish playing underneath, clip it shut, and then run it up and down a couple of times. And that'll take all the gunk from underneath what the, the string and get the, yeah, obviously transfer it to it. It keeps them nice and clean. Old undies are always good because they're lint free. T shirts, old t shirts. Yeah, absolutely not yellow dusters. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you'll, we've all done it, you know, when you wipe it down, there's bits of yellow. Yeah, and they stop the vibration of it on the string. And... Oh, it's horrible. But keep them clean. Wipe your, wipe your guitar down after you finish playing. Keep your hands clean. Wipe the strings down. Especially underneath, because the gunk gets caught in the, underneath the strings. So just wipe them down. And now we have them in tune at the. So you can play all your open chords after the 12th, and it's not horribly out of tune. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you got value out of this video, I would love it if you consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, ring the bell icon. It will let you know when I release new videos, which I do every single week. And be sure to check out the other videos about this brilliant little Harley Benton Strat style guitar too. I'll catch you next time.